Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the program. Today we're going to talk about the Gobekli Tepe, the Younger Dryas, and the spread of agriculture around the time or a little bit prior to the Fertile Crescent. Well, this article comes out of Popular Archaeology and it's titled First Anatolian Farmers Were Local Hunter Gatherers that Adopted Agriculture. So uh, Anatolia is Turkey and in Turkey there's Gobekli Tepe and Gobekli Tepe is thought to have been some sort of either learning center or a place where knowledge was distributed and among that knowledge was agriculture. That's the strong, strong implication that uh, researchers like Graham Hancock and other, uh, other individuals think happened. Now, uh, this article, or this study rather, goes through and supports this idea that um, the local hunter-gatherers in Turkey they for some reason switched over to agriculture and this genetic data uh, suggests that it wasn't because of some sort of influx of a new culture by force or the other um the other i guess the flip side of the argument was people from fertile crescent came over to anatolia and spread agriculture there so here's a map just before we continue Katahoyuk is um, one of the first towns ever and one of the rare towns outside of Mesopotamia that flourished. And Katahoyuk is in, Tur- in modern day Turkey, which is very close to Gobekli Tepe. Like I said before, one of the prevailing thoughts in academia was that the, the Mesopotamians from the Fertile Crescent went over to the surrounding area and uh, spread agriculture that way. The actual scientists and the actual study uh, revolved this analysis of eight prehistoric individuals, including the first genome-wide data from a 15,000-year-old Anatolian hunter-gatherer, and found that the first Anatolian farmers were direct descendants of local hunter-gatherers. So that's the first clue. These Anatolian farmers whose bones that they studied, they weren't a mix of people from Mesopotamia. They weren't from other agricultural societies. No, they were direct lineage of uh, hunter-gatherers in Anatolia. That's the first clue that the the hunter-gatherers weren't influenced outside. It was more of a something happened within the boundaries of Anatolia that changed them from hunter-gatherers to uh, farmers. These findings provide support for archaeological evidence that farming was adopted and developed by local hunter-gatherers who changed their subsistence strategy rather than being introduced by a large movement of people from another area. So this second part here is the the flip side theory that I was just talk, talking about, this outside influence. And so the genetic data is not supporting that side. Because of that, it's whether directly or indirectly, depending on how you interpret the data, Gobekli Tepe as a center for learning about agriculture and probably uh, civics and, and city building and stuff like that came from Gobekli Tepe. Very interesting. Interestingly, while the study shows the long-term persistence of the Anatolian hunter-gatherer gene pool over 7,000 years ago, it also indicates a pattern of genetic interactions with neighboring groups. So this second part is very interesting as well. So the, these Anatolian farmers started farming, and then within a few generations or almost immediately after, it, they start developing the sphere of influence, and that's shown in the genetic interactions of the regions nearby. So it's a very interesting uh, dynamic that, that's being uh, created here, this dynamic of farmers uh, learning how to farm and then kind of spreading out from there. And that theory it does make sense, but it was just applied from to Mesopotamia, uh, from Mesopotamia to Turkey. But, but the evidence, again, is not uh, proving that. Uh, farming was developed approximately... So this is the, this is the mainstream explanation about farming and how it started. So they, they, it was first developed 11,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent, and then it spread from there. So in places like Iraq, Syria, Israel, Lebanon, Egypt, Jordan, and southern parts of Turkey, that's when it, it kicked off. And then 8300 BC, it spreads to Turkey. That's the main line uh, theory. Another interesting thing, to take into account is the single largest component of the ancestry of modern day Europeans comes from these Anatolian farmers. So these farmers were kind of like the 
genetically anyway, they were the found the absolute foundation of the Europeans that live now. It has long been debated, however, whether farming was brought to Anatolia similarly by a group of migrating farmers from the Fertile Crescent or local hunter gatherers. We just talked about that. So the Max Planck Institute for the Science of Human History, in collaboration with scientists from the UK, Turkey, and Israel, they published in Nature Communications that confirms the existing archaeological evidence shows that Anatolian hunter-gatherers did indeed adopt farming themselves and the latter Anatolian farmers were direct descendants of a gene pool that remained relatively stable for over 7,000 years. So in other words, so we have these initial farmers, right, and these initial hunter-gatherers that adopted farming, the, this first, I, we call them the first crop of Anatolian farmers, and then their descendants later on were part of a gene pool that was stable for 7,000 years. So what does that mean? That means that there were no outside invaders, no new genetics uh, upsetting the, the gene pool that, that was uh, existing for 7,000 years. So that means, again, absolutely, there was no outside farmer. There was no Mesopotamian, wayward Mesopotamian farmer that came in and taught farming to the Anatolians. What probably happened was they uh, let's call it in-house in within their the borders of of anatolia the some meme some they had some cultural change something happened to where they changed their entire subsistence culture again what could that have been well the the gobekli tepe uh um, center for learning uh hypothesis does fit right in there so in the second study from the Max Planck Institute, they analyzed DNA from, eight, again, eight individuals and succeeded in recovering for the first time whole genome data from a 15,000-year-old Anatolian hunter-gatherer. So they compared that individual's DNA to later Anatolian farmers, as well as farmers from the neighboring region, and they figured out how they were related. So here's what they found. The early Anatolian farmers derived the vast majority of their ancestry, about 90%, from a population related to the Anatolian hunter-gatherer in the study. So this suggests a long-term genetic stability in central Anatolia over 5,000 years. Despite changes in climate and subsistence strategy, it was kind of like a seamless transition that brought, again, order and stability and peace to that land for, for a while. So, like Michael Feldman says, who was um, involved, he says the results provide additional genetic su support for previous archaeological evidence that suggests that Anatolia was not merely a stepping stone from the Fertile Crescent into Europe, but rather it was a place where local hunter-gatherers adopted ideas, plants, and technology that led to agricultural subsistence. Boom. Gobekli Tepe, right? The Gobekli Tepe hypothesis. The researchers also found a pattern of interactions with their neighbors. So by the time that farming had taken uh, off in Anatolia between 8300 to 7800 BC, which by the way, um, Ketalhuyuk was founded between 7400 and 6200 B BC. So again, these, uh, these dates are very, very close. Um, the researchers had found that the local population had about 10% genetic contribution from populations related to those living in what is today Iran and the Caucasus, and the, the other 90% coming from Anatolian hunter-gatherers. Hunter so it's very, and when you take into account the, the, broad, the broad view, 90% coming exclusively from hunter-gatherers does suggest a more insular community, a more insular society that maybe there were travelers but they didn't integrate as much as you would think they would when a large amount of people would come into a new territory so it seems like it's kind of painting painting this picture of almost like a peaceful time um and again this is the beginning of agriculture in the beginning and with that comes property and then laws and then trading and stuff like that so it's very very kind of mind-blowing that for the better part of five, six, almost 7,000 years, there was stability, which is very interesting because a lot of evidence before seemed to point to agriculture and war going hand in hand because, again, like I said, you have people have property, people start owning things, and people want more land, and then with that comes power and influence, and then from there, there's war and all that stuff. So it's very, very interesting if I had a time machine, I would definitely would love to go back to this time and see exactly what, what they had set up.
Um, here's a burial of a 15,000 year old Anatolian hunter gatherer. So, yeah, this is pre diluvian people right here. Let's see. So, yeah, let's look at these pictures here. Let me zoom in here. So, again, you have Mesopotamia, the, and all of this is um, basically the cradle of civilization, right? And then Anatolia is not not is there but it's not really in part of this this fertile crescent area and it's been taught that way for a long time and, and st but now with this new evidence it seems like either it was the other way around or or it happened concurrently together meaning people were educated in agriculture at the same time so maybe either all the agriculture came from Gobekli Tepe or maybe there was another center of learning that we haven't found in the Fertile Crescent that also taught these uh, subs subsistence techniques. Um, in any case, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I, j this is basically just an update of the Go of Gobekli Tepe, where they are now uh, in terms of the development of of uh, this line of inquiry and this investigate this ongoing investigation of not just what Gobekli Tepe was, but what was its role and its purpose in its in the context of its time. How old really is it? Um, it's it's no doubt pre-Diluvian. Uh, I think for the most part, most people agree with that. The dates that we have now are just um, again, it it was it's the oldest material that happened to be laying there at the time, in in the sediments that it was deliberately buried under. So that right away. The stuff that was deliberately that was used to deliberately bury the the site in question is dated to 9,600 year uh, 9,600 BC or so, but the site in question is most likely older than the stuff that it was buried in. So um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, I thought this is a very interesting article, and uh, my next videos will probably more than likely be uh, a series. M Pro two episodes possibly three and it has to do with archaeology egyptology and the bible the torah and the figures of the bible compared to the archaeological timeline of ancient of the of the 18th uh the 18th 18th dynasty of ancient egypt so we'll go into that uh next time so let me know what you guys think in the comments and i'll talk to you guys later